Fox News really thinks you'll make your way back there after the scorched earth becomes a little less scorched after some of the smoke clears. And again, Fox News clearly no longer understands America and Americans. And Americans have something to say about it. All righty, now let's bring in good friend of the show. And by the way, folks, let's write that in the script every day. Good friend of mine as well. Journalist and host of the Megyn Kelly Show on Sirius XM Triumph Channel every day at noon Eastern. Megyn Kelly is here with us tonight. Megyn, thank you for joining us. Um, before we get in, just congratulations on a million, a million subscribers. That is just astounding and a testament to, to your skills and your, in your journalism and your opinions. Thank Megan, you. always good having you. So let's talk a little bit about the Tucker. You know, here we are, week beginning of week three of Fox without Tucker. And, you know, I think Fox may be a little shocked at the, that this, this rating slide has stuck. You gave some free advice to Tucker recently over the weekend. Tell, tell us what you, what you recommend he do. I think he should breach the deal. I think that he has a very good argument they've already breached the deal. I don't think, you know, planting stories about one of your main talent who's still in your employ and allowing things to be leaked about him from the Dominion papers without protecting him at all, without doing anything about it, uh, is up living, is living up to your end of the bargain. I think it's a breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing on Fox's you know, part. And I actually think he's got a strong argument that there's a prior material breach by them. Even if there isn't, he should breach. He should breach and he should walk away and he should say, keep your $30 million. I'm going to get my voice out there. Go ahead and sue me. And the, the only issue would be the, the non-compete, the attempt by Fox to silence him and keep his audience away from him for the next year and a half. It would be until January of 2025. He would miss the entire election. And so let that be the issue that they're fighting over. Does Tucker need to stay silent even though he gave back the 30 million or doesn't he? As Fox bleeds out in the primetime ratings, let's see how that goes for them. See if its audience rewards them uh, for doing that to the audience. That's about hurting the audience as much as Tucker. And I think it's a fight he should relish. And, but as a lawyer, and you, you're one of the more successful lawyers around, you worked at the Supreme Court as well. Megan, won't Fox go after him for punitive damages if, if he does, in fact, breach the deal? Can't they do that? No, they're not going to get punitive damages. And Fox has more of a problem. That what they'd be wanting is specific performance, meaning they don't want money from him. They take him into court and say to an arbitrator, probably arbitration, and say, make him stop competing against us. Make him be quiet. He agreed to do that in his employment agreement with us. That's what they would want. And I, I just think they'd be in a very tough position. I think an arbitrator might see the argument um, legally, but I think Fox will be so dinged up by its audience if the headline day after day is Fox is trying to silence one of the main voices yeah. in America on political commentary for, for nothing, just because it's worried about its bottom line. He gave back the money. They fired him. They don't even argue, Eric, that they had cause. They're not arguing this is a four-cause termination, notwithstanding what you've read in the papers. They haven't said that. If this was a four-cause termination, they would have fired him, and they would have stopped paying him. They didn't do that. They just canceled the show for absolutely no reason, and now are trying to keep him muzzled so that he can lose all of his popularity with his audience while they try to rebuild their prime time. They need him silent, not able to talk about them, and not able to talk about the election or anything else in the news while they try to win back viewers in their hemorrhaging prime time. And they have, and they hemorrhage primetime viewers when you left. They hemorrhaged primetime when they got rid of Bill O'Reilly. They're hemorrhaging uh, primetime viewers in Tucker. But, the, you know, there's some, if you read, and we, you and I probably read everything that's published uh, about what's going on behind the scenes at Fox, there's a feeling over there, it's, yeah, okay, this is bad too, but we're Fox and eventually the viewers will come back to us because we're Fox. Is this time different? Well, we, we, I still say we, Fox has never hemorrhaged viewers like they are right now after the departure of a host. No way. I saw Beck go. I went. O'Reilly went. Now, O'Reilly and I went right as Trump was getting started. So I will say anybody was going to do well then. Even CNN did well in those days. But they don't really have Trump exactly right now. And Fox has abandoned Trump. So, I mean, just read the journal or the post on most days. You can tell. Um, or watch Fox. So they don't really have that drum to beat. Uh, and so I don't know how they're going to fill the void. Um, they've, it's really a middle finger to their audience that loves Trump. 
that they helped make love Trump. Now they pulled the rug out from under the Trump audience and the Tucker audience. And it, there's a lot of crossover there. And they basically told him to go pound sand. And so how are they going to get him back? Well, this week they decided to go back to, I called it sort of the Clydesdale moment for Budweiser. When they were hemorrhaging uh, sales, what do they do? They put out another horse's ad with a bunch of guys in the country. Now Fox goes back to the blonde conservative woman saying, this is our old trick. This will do it. And nothing against Kaylee McEnany, who's hosting this week, but that's not going to work. These people are irritated. They're angry. And it wasn't that Brian Kilmeade isn't well liked either. He is. He was there the, the first week. It's that they're mad at Fox and they're trying to tell Fox, we're angry. You did something to us without any explanation, Eric. Just now today, there's an article in Axios came out over the weekend saying, this is Tucker's next move is to go off on them. And I happen to know from my sources as well that they are essentially at impasse, that they have decided not to negotiate in good faith, Fox, and they have no intention of letting Tucker out of his contract. They want him silenced and sidelined. And that hurts Tucker, sure, but it hurts the country. It hurts his audience. It hurts dialogue in America because he was saying things a lot of people don't ever say. Whether you agree or disagree, that's valuable. Why does he need to be silenced? Why is they've never provided an an explanation. So now what Tucker's doing is trying to get his troops in order. He's sending out, as far as I can tell, a rallying cry for his his fans more than ever to boycott Fox News, not just 8, not just 9 p.m., not just 10 p.m., Fox News. Send them a message. Turn it off. Be on my side. Help me win this battle. Otherwise, you know, what, what bargaining power do I have? It's his audience who's his power or, you know, the lack of it would disempower Tucker. And I think he's asking them to help him. You know, the, the Fox first strike one was when they called Arizona for Biden before they had to be first. And for some reason, they bled viewers. They the viewers eventually came back last year. They did a pride month where a young five year old trans family family with a five year old trans. And they they were embracing this whole issue. That was I would call that their bud moment a year ago. And now, Tucker, that's second and third strikes right there. I just I, I think you're right, Megan. I think it's gone beyond now, Tucker. And the, the audience is saying, you're just going to do it. It doesn't matter who you put in that seat, whether it's Jesse or, or, or Pete Hex or whoever it is, or Kaylee McEnany, for that matter. Eventually, you're going to do it to us again. And you think you're bigger than we are as an audience. And I just think the audience has just finally said, you know, enough of them. Let's see what else what else there is out there. And they, they found other other avenues. Look at our world, Eric. When you and I were there, Fox was a monopoly. It dominated. There was no other place for conservative viewers to go or even just independent viewers who were sick of the mainstream lies. That's very different now. Newsmax has grown. Uh, you got News Nation, which is fledgling. No one's really watching it, but it's there. Um, and then in the digital space, you've got so many great conservative alternatives or even just, you know, center alternatives. My show's one. You got Ben Shapiro. You, you, you go up and down the list, The Blaze, and um, there's just whatever. There's so many options now that people absolutely so, so can love. I, can, I, can I stop so you got, there? Can I, they, Megan, they have less allow power me, with Fox. Allow me just this. Just let me allow you, you know, so there's the difference. Megyn Kelly can say what she wants and say what she feels. In fact, Megan, you came out strong in favor in, in defending the Second Amendment over the weekend. It was fantastic. I thought that was a Megyn Kelly moment to really embrace. And we'll talk to that in, in just a second. But does Tucker end up on digital, you think, so he can say what he, he can be Tucker? I think so. I think that's what he'll do. But I will say, you know, I mean, and I only know what I read in the papers on this, but I heard Newsmax made him a big offer. Rumble made him a big offer. A guy named Patrick Beck David, who's an entrepreneur, made him a $20 million a year offer on my show last week. Um, I know Tucker really loves being live. So I would say that's a point in like the Newsmax favor, that, that sort of opportunity. But I'm sure like me, he wants to be in charge of his own brand and he doesn't want another boss and he doesn't want this to happen to him again. So if I had to put money on it, I would say he goes independent. Talk, talk to us about the Second Amendment thing, and you, you, you nailed, you said it so apropos, and, and, and a lot of us who have been talking about this for quite a long time, very interesting. Tell us what you said about the Second Amendment, what's going on. So, I, you know, in my career now, I'm going on 20 years in our business, and I've covered more of these mass shootings than I ever wanted to. And I am sick and tired of opening up the papers or the phone and the uh, Twitter, whatever, and just seeing the entire aftermath get mired in the gun debate, which is lost. It's over. The, the the pro-gun control people have lost and they don't realize it. And they get us stuck every time arguing over something that's never going to happen. Not only can they not get a gun passed, a gun ban passed, but even if they did, it would be struck down by the U.S. Supreme Court. We have 434 
million guns in this country. 70% of those, so over 300 million, are semi-automatic handguns, pistols. Over 300 million, Eric. These people want to make a big deal every time out of the AR-15. There are about 20 million of those in the United States. Even if you were to ban those, and the Supreme Court would 100% strike that down, they will strike that down. They're too ubiquitous and common, which is kind of their test. Um, But let's say they struck down the AR-15s. Everybody would just use their semi-automatic pistols. That's what was used at the most deadly school shooting of all time, Virginia Tech. So we need to face reality, okay? The states that have the strictest gun laws, New York, California, Connecticut, where I am now, have had multiple mass shootings in this the past decade. They, they don't work any better than the states that have lenient gun laws, like Texas, where the mall shooting happened. The, the bad guys, as it turns out, don't obey the anti-murder laws, and they don't obey the anti—you can't have a gun law if you've had red red flags in your past, et cetera. So we need to start talking honestly about what else can we do in this vast, huge country? There have to be some things we can do, like genuine and legitimate mental health services that get people in their infancy of their mental health troubles, like institutionalization for people who are obviously the next school shooter, like the construction and funding of a new facility to which a loving parent might actually willingly send his or her child once they know that the child has psychopathic tendencies. They're out there. I've interviewed them. They have no recourse right now. The criminal justice system won't take them till they committed a crime. The mental health system won't take them because he can't be therapized out of psychopathy. There's no place to go. We never have these discussions. Fortification of soft targets is another obviously very real thing we need to do need to do at malls and schools and the like. And those are the solutions that need to dominate the post mass shooting events. Awesome. Awesome. Megan Kelly, you nailed it, especially that last one. I love that one. Fortify, strengthen, harden our soft targets. All those guns, gun-free zones, you really re- need to rethink those. Those are targets. Megan yeah, Kelly, agreed. always good having you. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining Great us. Great to see you.